Hi, today we are. Hmm? Hi, today we are going to talk about uh, how to use the slide scanner microscope. This is the workhorse of this facility because this is the most automated microscope that one can find, easiest one to use, and hence it's the most heavily booked microscope for the facility. Uh, this one is the heaviest booked, and then the confocal microscope. So uh, to turn on. Uh, before even we uh, get here, I let the people watch the two video modules. First module is mainly focused upon the bright field imaging. Second one is focused upon uh, fluorescence imaging. But uh, watching both of them actually helps them to get the idea of the overall big picture of how to use the microscope. Uh, to turn on the microscope, it's very simple. Unlike the confocal, there are only five switches. Uh, <laughs> one is here. Uh, two is the camera up here. In my video, I think I have talked about that you should only turn this on when you are doing fluorescence, but sometimes it gives error, so that's why I will turn it on. Uh, three, four, and five. Uh, that's about the turning on the microscope. Now everything is enclosed, so you don't need to turn off the room lights. You can keep it on. In fact, uh, while this is turning on, I will open this today for entertainment purposes uh, uh, because it becomes very boring to train on this one. So you use this screwdriver to remove the screw and then this opens up so that you can see the robotic arm and everything here. Uh, <coughs> the slides are loaded into this tray manually and then this automatic arm will come and pick up the slide and place it on the stage and then image it. Now ideally uh, everything should be fine and these uh, lights should be green and safety cover is open. That's why it is on. As soon as I close this, it's closed. This is the cassette holder in which I will place my slides. Uh, now, same net ID and password. Okay. Now, when you are loading the slides, today I have three bright field image samples and one fluorescence samples. Okay. Usually I train with this one because bright fields are much faster to image and fluorescence I just show one and then that can be scaled up very easily. Okay. Now uh, when people bring the slides a lot of times it has some gooey materials hanging out here, sticky material so I suggest them to use some kind of a film wipe, some kind of a clean solution and this like that. So because this is open, so it is giving error. So I say close and say so okay. Now it should be fine. Okay. So ideally uh, it should be clean and nice, but if it is not, I suggest them to clean. If something is hanging out here, then I suggest them to scrape it off like this and make sure everything is clean and nice. If the cover slip is exactly aligned, only then I suggest them to put them in the loader. Or else what will happen is if this, this thing is popped on the side, or with some gooey material, then this robotic arm doesn't like it. It is going to pick up the slide and hide it in this hole here. Okay, and then it will say, "Sorry, I dropped the slide. Please contact one of us." So that's why I showed you how to open this one so that you can okay. put your fingers in here and dig out the slide. If the slide is hidden there, you cannot use the microscope. As a it will say, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, it's dropped, so I cannot do anything. Okay. So, being said that, now if everything is good, slides are clean. If it was in fridge, I would suggest them to put it on this thing so that it warms up. Uh, it is on room temperature because earlier it has been case where somebody was trying to load and then each time there was some water vapor hanging out here and that would not allow the robotic arm to work properly and again you keep dropping the side there. Okay. So now because this is an upright microscope the light comes from top hence you would like to keep the uh, uh, sample in such a way that the cover slip is pointing up and the label is pointing out. Okay. So we place the sample and you can see from 1 till 50 another 1 till 50 in the cassette box. Okay. All right. So slide number 1 two and three. You remember in which order you placed uh, uh, by writing it down. For now I am putting it randomly and this is my third slide and it feels a little dirty. I will just clean it up a little bit. So 
in now we place it in here I kept a gap so that I can identify where it is and while loading sometimes people push it like this and the slide pops out make sure it is not doing that Knock it up a few times here like this bring it up slowly it's sitting here and the second one is here so that everything is all set all of them are green I close the cover everything is fine now when you start it it will ask for some kind of user rights and things like that that should be fine this is where the scanning happens to begin with we'll start with the expert uh, this is bright field this one is fluorescence okay. as the picture shows I select this one there are two ways to load manual load and automatic load earlier we used to also allow manual load where you can open this cover and load the slide manually but what we found out is people were misbehaving with the slide loader and hence it got messed up three times <laughs> three times it had to be replaced so we said okay it's not working out we'll stop the manual loading uh, but uh, it will be very much required only when you are having a frozen section and you are running out of time because if you do automatic loading you'll see that it will take some time as you can see uh, it is now going to scan everywhere and try to look for the sample so first it goes here parks and then it found three four slides you can scan all the way through like this like that and try to also look for in that hole where the slide is dropped to make sure that there is nothing there okay. so because I am not doing anything so I keep this door open while during the training is going on so that people can at least have some fun seeing a robotic arm moving around So all the scanning done and it will pop up a window like this. Ideally it will be this small. Uh, you can always make this larger by having this thing in the corner. Now I can see here that one, two, three slides are here, fourth one is here and cassette one is this one. If I do go to cassette two, there's nothing there. Okay. So I will choose cassette one and pick the slide of choice. Now if you are trying to do fluorescence imaging or even bright field imaging. The first slide should be the ideal slide that is the best because you'll be using the same parameter ideally to image everything else with the same parameters. Now if you are having three samples for example uh, like one is control, another is super bright, another is super dim. So I will image the brightest one first because if that can be imaged anything lower than that can be imaged. Sometimes people do reverse, they will put control or they will put the dim one. And then the bright one comes and it is out of range. So it's very important that we image the best sample and the brightest one first and set the parameters accordingly. Okay. So for now I'll pick this one and say OK. Now it is going to go and pick the slide. It pick the slide like that. Now it will take it to that hole to take a picture there. Uh, two pictures it will take. One picture will be a normal white image, and then it will do a barcode scanning with the red color. So barcode scanning is done. If it was having a barcode, then it can do scanning of that part also. Uh, it takes it and creates it on the stage. Okay. So currently the objective is parked somewhere here. This whole field is the slide area. Now uh, when we are imaging, uh, this should cover the entire cover slip area. If it is not, then we click this icon. It will allow me to define the overview area. Say so suppose I image and my slice was all the way till here. Then if I click this, it will say, take me to the top left corner using this joystick. You see I can move this thing, I can move it under the live mode, it will take me to the top corner and then I say ok, it will put my top corner and then it will say give me my bottom right corner. So you again navigate and move it to the other end where you see that the cover slip ends live and then you say ok and then you can take the overview image again. 
okay. it's pretty self explanatory so i don't go into that much to that right now now with regards to storage a lot of users what they do is they directly try to store it on the l drive l drive is fine uh, because what happens is here the l drive shows up most likely but sometimes it doesn't show up and if you have created a protocol using the l drive and if the l drive doesn't show up it will give errors first thing second thing is network fluctuations do happen and we are talking about gigabytes of data so if any fluctuation happens your data gets corrupted so i always suggest them to store it on the local drive first and then move it to the whatever respective drive they want okay so being said that uh, for now i will change this location to uh, this pc and it is on the e drive for example and let's see my folder is somewhere here or i deleted the folder okay, here it is and create the folder so today's date Okay. Okay. Now, with regards to the file name, it uh, basically uses this image, the slide name, whatever you choose, and the numbers and all of that. You can always change what you want by selecting this and then applying and then this. Slide time you add, so now it will keep adding more and more details to the file name. Okay. If you click this one, it will not store the file. So make sure that this is on the save to disk mode. Other than that, some people also like to image it is in such a way that each scan creates a separate file. What it means is, uh, like it will be a giant image, like I talked about in the stitching. You have a giant, a big image which is at a lower resolution and local areas will be at a higher resolution if you do uh, the substructure or uh, a new document for each scan what it will do it will create an overview like this the new image will be a separate image it will not be overlaid on the original one so some people like it like that way because it's faster to export but for routine imaging i always try to keep it checked off so it will always image layer by layer or one top on one top one another. So you just have one. Yeah, file. one one big file and it will be have multiple la mm. layers, like two x image and then on that forty x or twenty x image sitting on top of that. Mm. So you can actually scroll and zoom in, zoom out just like you do on Google Maps. Okay. Mm. Uh, so the rest of the area is like village and the twenty x is like city. Okay. So for now I'll give some generic name, slide number one. And I will do overview. So it will now go to the corner and then scan them by one. As you can see, it scanned a little more than what I need, which is fine. I, I don't care much about that. But if it was cutting off my sample, then I will use this icon to go back and then fix it. Okay. Alright. So now it is done. Now I'm going to image at say suppose 20x. If I zoom in, you can see the object here. But I cannot go any further than that right now. Uh, so I will now use 20x or 40x whatever to capture an image. Now there are different kinds of Z scans that one can do. For most samples, one plane is enough. But sometimes, as you can see, these are folded areas. That means there might be more than one plane. So. Some people like to capture images specifically for that, but in most cases it's not required because confocal microscope is much better suited for taking the Z-stack, which is not. This is epifluorescence microscope. So even if you take the Z-stack, you will not be able to capture much difference between different planes because all the out of focus light is coming. But in very, very rare cases, when somebody really wants, then they can go and take a Z-stack in a small area later on. And uh, there is a protocol here uh, for process and then uh, enhancements and there is something called EFI processing extended focus imaging processing or you can also direct do it directly using this button what this will do it will take all the planes and find the most focus pixel in the entire Z stack and compress into one plane instead of maximum in intensity projection this is extended focus imaging so even though they are in different focal planes, all of them can be compressed into one plane. 
so that's the beauty of these two options both of them take longer than usual of course like if you're having 10 planes then 10 times more time uh, so usually one plane is good enough and you, instead of scanning here you scan here well it is only one plane okay for now this is good i will say next edit the scan area uh, right now it has done a pretty good job of identifying the object as you can see uh, this grayish area uh, but it has also picked up some background and also picked up this <laughs> labels necessarily so you can always go here and try to adjust these parameters and get uh, better object selection now 